Hi, I'm Summer Bach, founder of Guts and Glory, and I want to welcome you to our month of the skin microbiome. So I talk a lot about the gut microbiome. In fact, I probably am obsessed with it. But the gut microbiome is only one, you know, part of one home for the bacteria in and on your body. Your skin has bacteria growing all over it. And in fact, your body itself has all these methods in place, like your skin itself has these methods in place um, that it utilizes that keep most organisms from growing on you, which is important. It's part of our immune system. So our cells do certain things on the layer of skin. Um, our sweat glands really determine what organisms grow where on our body. Um, there's a bunch of factors, even like your diet, your diet can actually affect what kinds of sweat comes out and what kinds of organisms feed off of that. So there's a lot of components when it comes to skin health. And a lot of people dealing with gut issues often struggle with skin problems. And we see eczema, psoriasis, hives, itching, flaky skin, dandruff, um, fun like fungus growing on the feet, things like that, toenails. Um, these are all skin issues, right? That are being, um, you know, determined by what's going on inside the body. So you have to clean that out. You have to take care of that. You have to have a good gut microbiome. You have to make sure that your body is digesting its food properly and not excreting a, a ton of toxins from the wrong bacteria living inside of the gut. That these things are important, right? Um, but when we're just looking at the skin itself. Uh, and we're thinking about, okay, well, how does, how does this work? What's going on here? Um, first of all, we've got many, many different kinds of bacteria that grow. I've listed them out here. I'm not sure if I want to butcher all of their names, but um, I can say that like Staphylococcus, which is staph basically, is a normal part of a healthy skin microbiome. It's just that when your immune system gets out of whack, um, you can, this can start to grow unchecked and cause problems. And there's only certain species of the Staphylococcus that are the kind that are pathogenic for us, but still grows in small amounts. It's there, it's present. Uh, you just want to make sure that your immune system is strong enough to prevent that from overgrowing. Um, there's also one called Dermabacter hominis, which I thought was a, a nice little name, basically meaning bacteria, skin bacteria for on humans. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, Micrococcus, um, there's just these many different kinds of bacteria and it says species here which means there's many different kinds of species of that genus that grow on the skin so this is the genuses or the genera is really how you say that that grow on the skin um, that are native to the skin and one of my favorite books on this subject i'll go ahead and show you is called the bacterial bacteriology of humans an ecological perspective i'm in love with this book it's a textbook i mean it goes deep into the science um, <clears throat> depending on how much you like to read about science and read through sentences that you may not understand any of them, which sometimes I find sentences in here, I have no idea what it means. Um, but for the most part, this information is very useful for me in the fermentation and certification program and really thinking about the work that I do with gut rebuilding and like how this affects all these different sub microbiomes, essentially. So you have this layer on the outside of your skin um, that ends up you know being filled with lipids and some other antimicrobial components um, they call them antimicrobial peptides um, the the skin itself has a generally a low pH it has low mo moisture content um, it has various immune um, cells um, it also has enzymes that the lysozyme that breaks apart um, any organisms that might be hanging out there. Um, it even has nitric oxide and you know some acidified nitrite things that are going to prevent um, microbes from growing and adhering to the skin. But regardless of those, there's ones that do end up growing, and most of them cluster around sweat glands. Um, they often cluster in like around hair follicles, like down in the hair follicles. And um, so you'll see a lot of microbes in high, con high concentration in areas where you have sweat glands. So this to me is so fascinating. These, this is what they eat. So this is what's available on your skin. 
cellularly. And of course they can't penetrate in your skin. They're living on the outer layer. Your body prevents them from getting access to any part past this outer layer. But um, they feed on glucose, ribose, glycerol, amino acids, fatty acids, lactic acid, um, urea, and phosphate, biotin, and thiamine. And then there's some micronutrients out there as well, like sodium and potassium and um, magnesium, things like that. And, and a lot of these nutrients come from sweat. So they're coming out of your sweat, which is coming from the inside of your body, which means that you want the right things to be coming out of your sweat. If it's a lot of toxicity, I mean, that's, that's you know, some people smell really gross when they sweat, like really bad. And that generally means that there's fat being excreted from the sweat glands and then that fat is being digested and broken down by bacteria and so the scent that you smell is not the, the person's sweat it's the excretions of the bacteria after they've eaten the sweat <laughs> sounds so gross uh, it is kind of gross um, so the way you end up controlling your body odor and smelling better has a lot to do with what you put in it and the overall microbiome inter internally as well so that's something to consider and then I want you, as you're just thinking about your skin alone, without thinking about the gut part of things, right? When you're just thinking about the health of your skin, there's a couple things that, um, that you can explore in terms of making your skin um, just a happier home for the right bacteria. One thing that I recommend is watching my video on chaparral oil. It's a great resource for people. Um, who struggle with any kind of yeast infections or you know fungal infections on their skin um, And I think it's even good if they have them internal and it's systemic It's a really good way to get the body to start uh, Balancing externally as well so that the immune system is given up given a little bit more wiggle room So watch the chaparral video. It's awesome. It's my favorite stuff It really works well for a lot of skin issues and can clear stuff up very quickly um, also in general, when you take a bath or shower, it's really good to get out of the shower or the bath, dry off, and then cover your body in oil. You can use shea butter or olive oil or coconut oil or sesame oil, but cover your whole body in oil and let that be what you use to moisturize your skin. That oil itself is going to feed the microorganisms. It is really cool. So um, I recommend doing that. I also think sunbathing from time to time, and I'm not talking about going out and like trying to get like a super dark tan, but you know, get outside, get the sun on your skin. That's going to help a lot with getting the right organisms to grow um, and to kill off organisms that shouldn't be there. Um, let's see, what are some of my other favorite things for the skin? Um, exfoliation, using the scrubby cloth that I have in my Guts and Glory Apothecary. So if you go to summerbach.com forward slash products you can find my skin scrubby and you soak in the bathtub for about 10 minutes and then you just scrub your skin and get all that dead skin off and that my folks my friends that will help tremendously with this whole process and then you put on a layer of oil and you just set yourself up to have a really nice array of bacteria growing that are going to keep things stable and keep you from having any kind of skin issues um let's see what else I think about the skin a lot with all this stuff. I think the other thing is making sure that you're not using hand sanitizers. You know, don't be using things that are killing bacteria. You have a natural antibacterial, you know, layer all over your skin. It's a combination of these microbes that are good for you, um, as well as these immune uh, modulators and these toll-like receptors and just even dead skin flaking. Although you have ways to prevent bacteria. So I want you to learn to trust that and if you want to use a source of some sort of antibacterial if you really feel like you need something maybe you're being exposed to something uh, use lavender oil you know just simply use like a drop of lavender oil and rub it all over your hands that is my recommendation instead of the antibacterial soaps and things like that like get those out of there they don't need to be there you can use a gentle soap like dr bronner's um and same thing in the shower, you know, you want to look and make sure that you're not putting a ton of chemicals on your hair, on your scalp, on your skin, uh, through your soaps and through like all these perfumey scented things. Really use some clean, natural, nice, um, you know, beauty products. It can, you can have a really simple uh, regimen actually. And I highly recommend that like 
clean this out. Get the toxins out. Do not put them on your body. They absorb right into your skin. They absorb into your bloodstream. Not good for you. And it's just not good for those bacteria. <clears throat> so, yeah, I hope you enjoy this month of the skin microbiome where we go deeper into each of these topics and I'll give you some detailed info uh, about really accomplishing the healthiest skin microbiome possible.